Hello everyone. In this um, video, we will talk about the vasculature of the heart. You know, in the previous lectures, we covered the heart itself, the internal and external structures of the heart, except the coronary arteries and cardiac veins, and also the vessels of the body in general were uh, covered as well but today we have very interesting um, uh, topic today we are going to talk about the blood supply and the blood drainage from the heart itself let us take a cross section of the heart uh, here guys and you know the most internal let me shift to this color so the most internal layer of the heart is the endocardium that's in the pink color and there is another tiny layer is a sub endocardial layer as well so just keep in mind that this layer i mean the endocardium and the sub endocardium uh, were supplied by the blood from the uh, charm from the chamber itself um, that lined it uh, either by diffusion or through a micro tiny vessels this is um, about the endocardium but what about the other um, external uh, two layers including the myocardium and the ebicardium so first of all you know guys uh, let me remind you that this is the fibrous uh, pericardium that lined by the parietal layer uh, of serous pericardium so i don't want to take out i don't i don't want to talk about um those two layers but i'm concerned today uh, talking about the layers of the heart itself so let us talk about the visceral layer um, of serous pericardium and this adipose tissue plus the myocardium so the myocardium and the epicardium guys um, supplied by the coronary arteries look at the coronary arteries here and here and here as well so if you dig deep in that you will see that the, the the coronary arteries are embedded in this adipose uh, fatty tissue this we mentioned that this fatty tissue is variable from some from from one to another and it increases in the size with the age so those vessels deep to the visceral layer so let me summarize it guys to you in general and let us say so we have endocardium layer that supplied from the chamber itself either by diffusion or by tiny microfasciculature okay now what about the myocardium and ebicardium so those two layers supplied by the coronary arteries in which the coronary arteries guys embedded in this fatty tissue just beneath or under this visceral uh, layer of serous pericardium now let us guys start talking about uh, those coronary arteries first of all this is the ascending aorta this is the first part of aorta that known as ascending aorta and if you look to the right and a little bit to the left you will see that there are two coronary arteries one is the right and one is the left so let us start uh, with the uh Oh, before I start with that, let me just remind you all those have been covered previously, but um, uh, I like to iterate what I mentioned before. So look at the uh, uh, aortic uh, valve that's composed from three cusps, guys. Cusps of aortic valve 
is like the R3, one is oriented anteriorly and two oriented uh, posteriorly. So, however, if you look at it here, guys, uh, look at the right one here. This is the right one and this is the left one. So there is a coronary artery here that arises from here and there is left coronary artery arises from this area. So this is the left coronary artery and this is the right coronary artery. But it does take a cross section through the ascending aorta and the aortic uh, cusps. Look at this one. This one is the posterior semilunar cusp. It's known as non-coronary cusp because there is no opening for coronary arteries. So no opening for coronary arteries. Still now we have the right and left cusp. So look at the opening of right coronary artery in the ascending aorta. So it opens just at the upper border of the cusp in the superior in the ascending uh, uh, aorta and uh, on the other hand we have the lift one as well so once the blood ejected from the lift ventricle to the aorta then those cusps guys because of difference of the pressure once the blood tries to return back will fill these Cusps, so the cusps will shut the valve, and the engorgement of the blood um, and the blood itself will drain into the coronary arteries through these um, uh, cusps. Okay, so I would start, guys, with the uh, right coronary uh, artery. So if you look to the coronary artery, it arises, as I mentioned, from the anterior aortic sinus. Let me show you again, guys. So this is the anterior aortic sinus. Let me uh, help you in redirect this, guys. So here is going to be like better to uh, understand what I'm saying. Uh, so... So guys, so this is the uh, aortic valve and we mentioned there is one cusp oriented anteriorly and two oriented posteriorly. Um, but however, uh, this is, you know, uh, uh, we have right cusp and left cusp and we have posterior one. This is something related to the um, uh, location of those cusps uh, in the uh, Imperio. We mentioned that in a previous uh, lecture uh, about the heart. You can watch um, that uh, uh, watch that lecture, guys. Similarly, also for the uh, pulmonary uh, valve. So, however, the right coronary artery arises from the anterior um, cusp here. So this is what I've been mentioned here. So the right coronary artery guys arises from the anterior cusp here of ascending aorta. So it descends at the first in the coronary uh, sulcus. You know the coronary sulcus encircles the heart like a crown from the right and from the left and from the back. So this is the coronary sulcus. Some people call it atrioventricular sulcus because it divides or separates, not actually separates, but it's the border or the boundary between the atria above and ventricles below. So this is the coronary sulcus or atrioventricular sulcus. If it's in the right, this is the right atrioventricular sulcus. If it's in the left, it's left atrioventricular sulcus. But personally, I prefer to use coronary sulcus. Okay, so 
Now, the right coronary artery that arises from anterior aortic sinus of ascending aorta and continues to the back. Now, you are looking, guys, in this figure, this is anterior view of the heart. Let us look at the posterior and inferior view of the heart. So, this is the right. Let us continue. We said that it's reflected to the back. So let us follow the right coronary artery once it's reflected until it reaches this region. We'll talk about it's called crux, but we'll talk about it later. So, however, then it divides into two branches here one move to the left and one moved uh, and continues in the posterior interventricular sulcus so this is the posterior interventricular sulcus because it's posteriorly and it's located between the two ventricles right and left okay what the branch of that was the pathway in general about the coronary artery but let us dig deep more in that and Again, this is the right coronary artery, arises from ascending aorta, guys, and of course, directly, it gives, immediately, sorry, it gives two branch. Before that, do you remember, this is the right ventricle, and this is the entrance to the pulmonary trunk. This entrance, guys, is the infundibulum it's known as infundibulum or conus arteriosus so this conus conus it means like a funnel shape right this is funnel shape so conus arteriosus or infundibulum so there is a branch here guys look at it this one this branch, guys, is to supply the anterior wall of the upper part of right ventricle and the infundibulum as well, so or the conus arteriosus. So this branch is known as right conus artery, simply. So in this direction, but on the opposite direction. There is another artery, another branch, guys. Do you remember the SA node that's located between the right atrium and the and the uh, superior vena cava? Okay, there's a branch for SA node known as sinoatrial node branch, or you can say SA node branch, SA nodal branch. So this is the second one. Of course, it's very close to the right auricle and right atrium, so it gives atrial branch, right? So we have right conus, we have sinoatrial nodal branch, and we have atrial branch. But, listen guys, you see the SA nodal branch, this one, so the SA node branch in this case, it comes from the right coronary artery. And I would say 60% of the people, the SA node branch comes from the right coronary artery. That means 60% of people or the SA node of those people, and 60% of them, has been supplied by SA nodal branch that comes from the right coronary artery. That means still we have 40% of people, the SA node is supplied by left coronary artery. Okay, let us continue, guys. So, um, what do we have other than the conus branch on this side and as you know the branch atrial branch so i can see here a ventricular branch this one 
and this one. So those supply the right ventricle. So those are anterior ventricular branch. Usually they are from two to three. In this case, I can see two, right? So they are between two and three. Those to supply the anterior surface of right ventricle. Okay. So, conus, right conus, guys, a synoidal branch, atrial branch, anterior ventricular branch. But look at the coronary artery here. At this border, at this margin, guys, it reflected as I mentioned to the back. So, this faint color it indicates that this vessel moved posteriorly but at this area guys at this margin the right coronary artery gives a marginal branch this is the right marginal branch at this margin it gives a right marginal branch because there is another left marginal as well right so however let us uh uh, focus on the right coronary artery now and uh, okay so again it gives this right marginal branch well if you more in his textbook clinical uh, clinical anatomy mentioned that the the right marginal artery is short and will not reach the apex but um, Bray's anatomy, um, in an edition edited by Suzanne Standring, um, it mentioned that the right marginal artery is long enough to reach the apex. That means it will reach the apex in some people. Anyway, this is not a big deal, guys, but I would like to focus on the now again back on the right coronary artery that um, gives a uh, right marginal branch then continues in the coronary sulcus in the back let us follow it in the next slide okay here is the right coronary artery that passes in the coronary um sulcus and you remember this branch guys right this is the right marginal branch okay So then it continues again in the coronary sinus. Then at this point, you see the red circle. This point is known as crux. The crux of the heart. In which the interventricular septum here inter and interatrial septum, I would say, meet. But most importantly at this point guys the right coronary artery divides to its two terminal branches. this one this branch descends in the posterior interventricular sulcus so and it takes I mean this uh, branch of artery it takes its name from that sulcus so this artery is or this branch is known as posterior interventricular branch but clinicians prefer to use posterior descending and I I would say highly recommend to use posterior descending PD okay this is the posterior descending because I will, after a couple of slides, I will talk about the anterior descending. So let us now focus on the posterior descending. If you look at this artery, you will see that there is a branch um, to the right and to the left. Those branches known as septal interventricular branch or interventricular septal branch to supply 
the interventricular septum but not all of it just the posterior one third of it say this is the uh, interventricular septum this is anterior and this is posterior so just the posterior one third of it will be supplied by the interventricular septal branch posteriorly another interesting uh, thing about this artery okay it passes in the posterior interventricular sulcus it have septal branch interventricular septal branch that supplies the posterior one uh, posterior uh, one third of interventricular septum and 67 guys percent of us um, have this artery arises from the right coronary artery that means 67 67 percent of us guys have this branch from the right coronary artery and we call those people right dominance it's written after a couple of slides you can read it so those people write dominance but if the pt i mean the posterior descending this branch i mean if it comes from the left coronary artery we call those people left uh dominance right and those about 15 percent but there are 18 percent guys of people have the pd from the left and from the right as well and so they have from the left and another one from the right so they have two posterior descendings so from right and left so those called co dominant co dominant okay most importantly guys uh, you know we mentioned about us a note now at this area guys there is a branch for av node right this is the av node av bundle branch to right and left however let us talk about the av node in which 80 percent of blood supply to the av node comes from the right coronary artery in this branch here okay this is the right coronary artery that divided into pd posterior descending and posterior lateral artery some people call it posterior lateral ventricular however it supplies as you see here the left atrium but which part of left atrium the diaphragmatic surface of left atrium this is the diaphragmatic surface of the heart yes and this is the diaphragmatic surface of left ventricle so this is the end the story of the uh right coronary artery okay so let us have a look on this angiogram so don't be confused guys this is the catheter that um, usually they get in the uh, uh, to the coronary arteries through the uh, femoral um, artery and from femoral artery they pass through the um, external iliac then through the abdominal aorta up to the thoracic aorta then from thoracic aorta to the arch of aorta then uh, from us then ascending aorta then they get into the coronary artery so in this case we have the right coronary artery here they inject the dye to see these uh, vessels so look at it here there is a kind of small branch i would say maybe conus and uh, sinoatrial and uh, uh, atrial branch and anterior ventricular branch but 
once it reflects to the back, it gives an important branch, which is the marginal branch. This is the marginal branch. Some people call it acute marginal. Some people call it right marginal. So at the end of the day, it's the marginal or the right marginal artery. Then the coronary artery, as I mentioned, reflected to the back and at the area of crux here it divide into two branches or more because there is another one for AV node so this one is the branch that known as PD posterior descending or posterior interventricular branch that gives of course interventricular septal branch and at this area there is a branch to the AV node and uh, however the, so this is the first branch, PD, and the other branch is the posterior lateral ventricular branch, or PLV. Back again, let me remind you guys, here is the posterior interventricular branch, this one, and this is the posterior lateral ventricular branch, again. So again, this is the PD. Posterior descending, and this is the posterior lateral ventricular branch. So, um, in this case, guys, um, this has the PD from the right coronary artery, so it's a uh, right uh, dominant. So, I would say this is the last thing about the right coronary artery. Let me show you guys this uh, video. And uh, uh, let us play it. Okay. Look at the. This is again the catheter that goes uh, up to the right coronary artery. And there is a couple of small branch here um, conus branch, anatrial branch, and so forth. And look at the marginal artery here. And the left coronary, I will fix it. I will show you. you can look at the upper figure here. So, this is the right marginal artery, and this is the right coronary artery, and reflected in the coronary sulcus to the back and divided into two branches. So, this is the posterior descending branch, and this is the PLV or posterior lateral ventricular. Let me stop the video, guys. and again explain to you this right coronary artery the main stem and this is the marginal branch this is the right marginal branch and let us continue with the right coronary artery in the coronary sulcus in the back and at the crux of the heart it divides into pt or posterior descending or posterior interventricular branch and the other branch the second one is the uh, PLV posterior lateral ventricular branch that supplies the diaphragmatic service of the left ventricle the uh, uh, left coronary artery well first of all when you look to the left coronary artery it's larger than the uh, right one so the left coronary artery guys arises from the posterior aortic sinus we have one two and three one is anterior and two is posterior so uh, the uh, posterior the left coronary artery arises from the posterior aortic sinus remember this is the posterior cusp that known as non-coronary cusp anyway so it passes guys between the pulmonary trunk and the left auricle as you see here if it's not clear let me show you this which is i think uh, we have a better review here but um let me erase Mm, this okay so look to the uh, left coronary artery that um, uh, arises behind the uh, 
um, pulmonary trunk, of course, between the pulmonary trunk and the left auricle, then it arises here and divides into two branches. One branch that descends in the anterior interventricular sulcus. This is the anterior interventricular sulcus between the two ventricles. You know that. So this artery takes or it took its name it took its name from the from this sulcus. So this branch is the anterior interventricular branch, right? Or artery. Here we go. Anterior interventricular branch of left coronary artery. But they don't use um, this term, they use lead. Lift because it's left side. Anterior because it's anteriorly. Descending because it descends here. So let us go back, guys, to our, uh, uh, which is here. So once the uh, left coronary artery arises from the area between left auricle and pulmonary trunk, it divides into two branches. This branch is the anterior interventricular branch and circum flex that circle to the back and the flex to the back. So circum flex branch or CX. They use CX. So clinicians, guys, prefer to use the abbreviations. Circumflex written CX. Anterior interventricular branch. It's too long, I would say. So they use the lat. Lift, anterior, descending. Because you remember, guys, the posterior descending. That's a branch of right coronary artery in the um, from the back, right? So now the left anterior, um, this left anterior descending guys. Let us dig deep in that, um, and of course uh, you can see that um, uh, the anterior intervene or the lead supplies greater part of the. Um, left ventricle guys and the left part of right ventricle as well because this is the right ventricle and this is the left ventricle so um, but in general uh, the left coronary artery let me erase this if you look at the left coronary artery you would see that it supplies guys um, the um, lift atrium here and lift ventricle guys in general and um, part of the right ventricle and of course the interventricular septum not all of it the anterior to third let us dig deep in those branches okay again and again this is the left anterior um, descending branch that descends in the anterior interventricular sulcus look at it it gives a septal branch also like the posterior descending so the anterior descending this blood gives interventricular septal branch that um, look at the angle of branching is like 90 degree however the end of it is like a mustache look at the terminal ends it's like a mustache you know mustache as they show up so this is the artery it ends like that so these two features the septal uh, interventricular septal branch that arises in a 90 percent degree from it and the end of it that look like uh, that um, looks like a mustache those two features are considered as a trick to differentiate it from the cx i will show you uh, in the next couple of slides what i mean Okay, so those branch, interventricular branch, also, as I mentioned, um, 
supplied the interventricular septum. But I think you remember before a couple of minutes we mentioned this is the interventricular septum and we mentioned that the posterior one-third supplied by the posterior descending but the anterior two-third guys supplied by interventricular septal branch but from the lat left anterior descending this one right okay but this is not everything about the lad because if you look at the lad you would see it also give a like oblique blend which is known as diagonal diagonal branch this is important right diagonal branch now that's i would say more than enough about the left anterior descending branch let us shift to the second branch of left coronary artery is known as circumflex rcx that continues in the coronary sulcus and reflected to the back and it gives at this margin guys left marginal uh, branch do you remember the right marginal branch this is the right marginal branch which is a um, which is a branch of right coronary artery but here guys we have the left marginal branch which is a branch of circum um, flex so let us continue to the back and have a look uh, so there's another review for uh, left coronary artery and lead that gives interventricular septal branch and continues to reach the avex and reflected to the back and make an stomosis i mean the lad the lad make an stomosis with the posterior descending in the back well this is another story guys but uh this is again the diagonal branch here from the lad here is this cx which is um the second branch of left coronary artery and it um, um, goes in the coronary uh, sulcus and gives, as I mentioned, a uh, left marginal branch. Some people use, you know, they uh, said this is, um, they call it, sorry, either the left, uh, either the left marginal or obtuse marginal OM. So it's okay to say left marginal or Optus marginal and the uh, um, uh, ref the uh, let me erase this to show you let us continue with the uh, this is the circum flex guys that continues and reflected to the uh, back as you know sometimes they call this branch atrioventricular branch which is, um, you know, close to the atrium and left atrium and ventricle. So, I would say now that um, uh, sinoatrial branch, guys, uh, you remember that we mentioned that sinoatrial branch here, you know, that as in what, sorry, 60% uh, of people, the SA node supplied from the right coronary artery that means what i want to say that 60 percent of blood supply for sa node comes from the right coronary artery while 40 percent of um uh of blood supply to sa node comes from the left coronary artery exactly from cx from the circum flex. So that's a node can have their uh, blood supply from right coronary artery, and they found like sixty percent. Yani sixteen percent. أغلب الأحيان بكون blood supply لس a node من right coronary artery. وأربعين بالمية بكون من left side. Don't be confused, guys. 
So if it's, in the, if it's from the right, that means it's from the right. If it's from the left, CX, it's going to be from the left. And this is, you know, represents 40%. Uh, percent. That's it. So guys, uh, this is an angiogram that uh, uh, show you here the direction up in this figure, the direction of the beams. So in this case, the it's you know the the orientation is uh, of this angiogram is um, uh, left anterior oblique cranial view. So this direction from the left side anteriorly and oblique. So you will see if we take it like from this way, right anterior oblique. So it's different. So let us take this one, left anterior oblique. If you look to the heart from that way, so when you look to the um, heart from the left oblique, uh, left anterior oblique, you would see that the this is the left main stem, left coronary artery. I mean, so. Uh, you will see, guys, the uh, the left coronary artery traverse vertically here, but you will see the circumflex um, uh, traverse the, uh, the 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 view uh, horizontally. So, in the middle of the page, you will see the LAD and. The horizontal vessel is the CX because you know you have LAD and CX branch of left coronary artery. So let me uh, give you another uh, view or another uh, details about that. So this is the left coronary artery, guys. Look to the um, interventricular septal uh, branch here and look at the end. It ends like a mustache. This is very uh, important feature. So you can differentiate it, of course, from the CX. Well, here I'm not pretty sure where is the uh, marginal branch of CX, but I can see here the left anterior descending and the diagonal branch. So if in this case, that was the view from here, from the left. But if you take a view also obliquely anteriorly, but from the right, you will get this view. So who's moving vertically here is the CX, not lead. Who's moving horizontally is the lead, guys. So don't be... Are confused. That's why they use this feature, the interventricular septal branch that come out from the or arise from the lead vertically at 90 degree long. This is the interventricular septal branch. And they use another feature of the artery that ends like in a mustache shape. So they can say, oh, okay, this is the Lead, of course, with experience, but now this is the CX again, and this is the left marginal branch of CX. Okay, and you know, this is continuous to the back, uh, as we mentioned, as atrioventricular branch of CX. So, here's uh, just to show you guys, uh, this is the same as uh, the figure on the right. But here's you can see the occlusion of the lead here. Look at the occlusion and stenosis uh, here compared to the CX. So this is the left coronary artery here. That gives this is the catheter. Don't be confused. This is the catheter. So this is the lead and this is the CX, guys. And uh, I'm not sure if this is okay. Here's again. So we have, I think, a video. I'll show you uh, this. I think this one. Yes. Yes, this is after injection. You will see the difference when they injected. You can see the 
um, occlusion of the um, LAD compared to the uh, CX. So uh, also look at the blockage. It's like stenosis here. I would say 20 to 40 percent. Also there is stenosis here, and there is also stenosis here. On the other hand, look at this, which is the lift anterior descending. This is the lat, right? So look at the occlusion here of the uh, lat. It's almost they said it's almost ninety five percent occluded. So also there is occlusion here, guys. If you can see. So on the other hand, they now we are looking to the not to the lat. We are looking to the uh, uh, circum uh, flex that goes horizontally here. But the occlusion is not in the CX and not in the marginal, but also in the branch of the marginal, left marginal artery. Okay, so the blockage guys can be, for example, this case in the right coronary artery and look to the infarction and necrosis in the right um, uh, ventricle. Look at the uh, occlusion here in the CX itself or in the marginal branch of CX. Also, which is, uh, I would say, most um, also common, the uh, obstruction in the left anterior descending and look to the uh, necrosis uh, of the left uh, ventricle. So, we mentioned that uh, we mentioned the variations of the coronary arteries between people. So we mentioned, guys, that is the right coronary artery that gives a branch that known as posterior interventricular branch or PD, right? Posterior descending. So if it comes from the right, so those people are right dominants. So, you know, the percentage of those people like 67. So, for example, if we are 100 people, 67 of us have, you will, you will expect that they will have uh, the posterior interventricular artery from the right coronary artery. is a branch from right coronary. But 15% of people, the posterior Interventricular artery or PD, posterior descending, I mean, is a branch of left coronary artery. So, those people known as left dominance. But some people they have uh, uh, from both, from the right and from the left coronary artery, and those are co dominant. They are around 18%. Cool. So, uh, conduction system is um, important. So, we mentioned that uh, SA node mostly uh, supplied by, or you know, you can say 60% supplied by right coronary artery, but uh, it can also supply by left coronary artery, and those, you know. And the person is around 40 percent so don't be confused say for example this is a heart and this is a heart this is a node and this is a node so 60 percent you would see that the blood supply to the sa node comes from the right coronary artery and also this is again as a node the, bl the blood supply for SA node can also comes from the left coronary artery if this is the left right left coronary artery so merely uh, this represents 40 percent but this represents 60 percent anyway so what about the AV node and the bundle well guys the um, 
AV node, as you re if you remember that, there is a branch of right coronary artery that's known. Um, uh, the, I mean, the right coronary artery reflected to the back end at the crux of the heart. It divides into posterior lateral and posterior descending. And there is a branch to the AV node. 80% of blood supply to AV node comes from the right coronary artery. But this is about the AV node, but what about the bundle and the uh, prams? So the bundle as well, mainly from the right coronary artery, which is close to it, but the right bundle supplied by left coronary artery and the uh, uh, left bundle supplied by right and left coronary artery. So this is the uh, blood supply of the conduction, uh, conduction system of the heart. Well, finally, guys, uh, we talked too much, but um, let us talk about the venous drainage of the heart. Let me summarize it to you guys. Look to the right. To the right, we have a small cardiac vein. And there is a small vein here that accompanies the this artery. I think you know this is the right marginal artery, the red one. Right? So this is the right marginal artery, so the right marginal artery is accompanied by marginal vein. This is small marginal vein. However, the uh, marginal, let me use this, the marginal vein drains into small cardiac vein and the small cardiac vein now accompanies the right coronary artery and reflect it to the back. Let us um, have a look. Okay, here is the small cardiac vein reflected in the coronary sulcus all the way to the back until it reaches the coronary sinus now on the left side we have not small we have guys great great cardiac vein that passes or lodged in the anterior interventricular sulcus along with the lad or lad or anterior interventricular artery and it ascends i mean the great cardiac vein in the coronary sulcus and now it accompanies with the cx circumflex artery and continue to the back here this is again the um, uh, great uh, cardiac uh, vein that reflected to the back and it continues as coronary sinus this is the coronary sinus now what else in let me show you here so we have on the right we have small cardiac vein and on the left we have great cardiac vein guys we are looking to the heart from the back this is the posterior surface of the heart and this is the diaphragmatic surface of the heart so we have a small cardiac vein and the great cardiac vein that ends as or formed the uh, ended as a coronary sinus bigger vein just remember guys when you when you talk about the veins of the heart remember this word cardiac always you have to use this word cardiac small cardiac vein great cardiac vein and a vein in the middle guys in the posterior interventricular sulcus in this sulcus accompanies the posterior interventricular artery this vein in the middle so posteriorly is known as 
middle cardiac vein. So, so the middle cardiac vein drains with a small cardiac vein into the coronary sinus and the coronary sinus drains into the right atrium one thing still guys here is the um, from the back we have posterior cardiac vein some people call it posterior vein of left ventricle and you can say also some authors say this is the posterior cardiac posterior cardiac so the posterior cardiac also drains um, here guys somebody can say yeah this is posterior cardiac vein where is the anterior okay guys this is the anterior cardiac veins those drain the blood from the anterior surface of right ventricle so they are known as anterior cardiac vein not posterior no those are anterior and on the right but the posterior cardiac on the left however the anterior cardiac vein drain the blood in the right atrium directly I will iterate what I mentioned before that the coronary uh, uh, sinus will drain the blood to, uh, at the end uh, into the right atrium and this is the opening of the coronary sinus that's located just medial to the opening of inferior vena cava and guarded by uh, uh, Thibisius valve so um, you know this is the catheter that was talking about the gut and entrance to aortic uh, aorta to the coronary arteries. Once they reach the obstruction after injection, the dye they can see the uh, obstruction. So it, this obstruction, or can be, um, I would say. Um, dilated this obstruction can be dilated so if this is the vessel guys if this is the for example the lad um and there is an um obstruction here guys and so they use the catheter and they get get in here and there is a balloon at the top of this catheter once they inflate the balloon look at, look at the balloon that inflated here so the balloon will pressure the uh, this plaque this uh, uh, I would say the um, obstruction uh, against the walls of the vessels so then the vessel will open then they will put a stint so this it depends I think as far as I remember if the obstruction they can use this uh, technique if the obstruction less than 60 percent but if the obstruction is more than 60 percent they have to shift to the um, uh, cabbage they have to shift to the cabbage so they have to use a graft decay they have to use veins and arteries they take usually the saphenous vein or the internal thoracic artery as a graft they take it and say for example there is a obstruction here so they will take a blood immediately from the aorta and bypass this obstruction for example there is obstruction here guys so they will connect um, they will put a graft here and bypass the obstruction to here so this is the obstruction so this is um, known as cabbage coronary artery bypassed a graft but this is uh, known as PTCA, precutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty. Uh, okay, guys, uh, that's all. Read it if you have any question, please uh, let me know. Thank you um, uh, for listening, and uh, I hope you find uh, value in it. Thank you.